Shut up and sit down. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Shift. This is episode 220. I, of course, am your host, the greatest man who's ever lived, your funky leader. It's me, it's Matt. With me, as always, it's my best friend, the Beastmaster of Third Shift. And he doesn't have another nickname. You got to get another nickname on there. The Light Bearer, the Light Bringer. Well, that's yeah. it comes together in the Beastmaster. It's like. And the Beastmaster, yes, I know. So it's, it's all one thing. We got to get going on it. We got to make up some more. I can do it, man. I got all sorts of titles. The the unlucky son of a, you know whatever. <laughs> that one works. <laughs> that one works. The unluckiest man on the planet. Except that's not true because you have a thing that I don't have right now, and actually, you actually got me the thing that I have that you don't have. So you're you luck- saw how I got that though, right? You yeah, I saw did see how it, I got yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> You understand the cost. <laughs> you should have put that up on Twitter, actually. That would have been a good That's Twitter true. post. That's true. I'm not up with those hip kids, though, man. I don't know how to do things on Twitter. That's hard. It's like a video. You got to like click things, links. I don't know. But with me, my- it's the Beastmaster Third Shift, <laughs> the least savvy social media customer in the planet. It's Eric, and we're going to ask him. Eric, how was your week this week, my dude? Wow, it was a great week, everybody. I started my whole adventure at work in a whole new place, in a whole new land, all sanctioned off by myself. I'm protected. Somebody came in with potential COVID and was like, oh, I think I'm sick. And then they got sent home. And then I was like, hey, people, like, what's going on? Do the confidentiality. We can't tell you these things. And I went, oh, well, hopefully I'm okay, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel sick, so I think we're all right. <laughs> this is the one time I'm glad we don't work at the same building because we would have been in the potential COVID situation and we're dumb idiots, so we would have just been yapping and talking with each other the last four days anyway. Mm-hmm. And then we just start spreading it all over the place. Ah, oh, so there you go, folks. Yes, I got to keep working. Yes, I get to go out and endure the world as it stands. But that's been the work life, family life. It's been chaotic and busy. The kids are all now doing school from home. My wife still has to teach. She's just having to do a million and one things. It's driving her up a wall already. It's crazy. It's difficult. It's insane. And here I go off to work every day, and I can't help. So it's unfortunate. So real life right now has been busy, 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 busy. I did score that PlayStation 5. It did arrive. I've played it for about one day now. I've gotten like, so, you know, a couple, few hours in total time. Uh, I still really haven't played it though, because I keep just like looking at stuff and trying to figure things out. And then by the time I start to get to the point where I think I should play a game, I start to wonder if I should play that game or if I like have to download it for the PlayStation 5 instead of off the ex- extended storage drive to get the benefits from it, which I find out that you actually do. So if you play from your PS4's extended drive, it will not upgrade it. It will not do all the fancy, cool PS5 stuff. So you have to upload your saves all to the PS5 and then delete everything and then re-download it all for the PS5 to then get your 60 frames per second and all that other crap going. So when I figured all this out, I was like, ah, this is a lot of work. And like I just told you folks, work and life right now is pretty bananas. So I just don't want to deal with things that are tough or annoying. Yeah. So I, uh, so I just shut it off and then I watched anime I went to bed and I'm like, man, I got this brand new thing that I've been dying to get. And every night I'm like, I'm gonna, this is the night I'm going for it. And then I just s- turn it off because it's difficult. Here's what you do. You just download that Crunchyroll app onto your PS5. And then you That's technically, it. I'm on my PS5 all the time. I'm on my dude. new PS5. Yeah, watching Crunchyroll. But then can people see what I'm watching? Sometimes. I don't want people judging me for what anime I watch. You know what I mean? I don't want someone like kicking, oh, you're watching Inubuta, Yuka, Yuka. Oh, It'll just weirdo. say you're in the Crunchyroll app. I mean, you don't see all okay. the crap I watch on YouTube. It just says Matt's on YouTube. YouTube. Okay, perfect. Because I watch a lot of cool stuff on uh, Crunchyroll. And then once in a while, I'll go watch something really weird. And then I'm like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. Or this is weird and I was hoping it was going to be. You know what I mean? But I don't want someone to see me watching something that I, I, I was questionable. And then they're like, well, Eric's a weirdo. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I didn't know it was this. I was, kinda, I was just checking it out. It looked cool. This makes me want to have an anime discussion with you because I added like 
Kuroko Puchiku high school climbing girls to the queue. It's all about like rock climbing as <laughs> this team. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'll watch a couple episodes. What is this? Yeah, yeah exactly. And then it could turn south. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, no, 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 no. I, 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 I it wasn't meaning to watch this kind of thing. I, I thought it was something different. Leave me alone. Sure you did, buddy. Sure you did. <laughs> and and you know what? I shouldn't be shaming people who like that anyway. I have nothing against it. It's just yeah, yeah. Even if I was watching, I wouldn't want people to judge me for it. So you know, just privacy. That's all. Right, right. So anywho's there you go. I'm playing that a little bit. I'll be playing more tonight. Hopefully, a lot more tonight after the show and get the kids to bed. I'm gonna be up rocking and rolling. So hopefully, we'll have some fun there. And then last but not least, FF7 Remake, World of Warcraft, Godfall. Those are the games I've been playing this week. Yes, no Gearbox games, but that's false because Godfall is a Gearbox published game. Mm -hmm. So I'm still in the realm of Gearbox, folks, all right? But I haven't touched Borderlands. I do feel bad about it, but I wanted to play it once I had it on the PS5. But then, like I told you, I found out I got to actually delete it, do it, da 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 to get to 60 frames per second. It's a whole rigmarole. Anywho's briefly, World of Warcraft, same old, same old, nothing special, I won't elaborate. Godfall, I got through a few more missions. I'm still in the Earth Realm, so I cannot uh, pass judgment. Um, the more I play, I'll have a lot more to say. Like, some of this is, some of it's still real fun and really cool, but there are some issues I'm starting to see, but maybe it changes as we go along. So I don't want to, like, really say, yo, I don't like this or I don't like that, because I don't feel like I'm far enough yet. It's a gorgeous game, regardless. It It is fun. It is worthwhile. But, uh, I am starting to find some stuff where I'm like, oh, okay, this might not, this might not hold me all the way through, you know what I mean? But, I'll reserve judgment and I'm gonna keep playing and I'll report back to you as soon as I do. And then, of course, FF7 Remake. Love this game. I finally beat it last night. Finished it up. I'm gonna say briefly and I'll talk more about this a different day. The ending really aggravated the hell out of me. Uh, I, I don't mind it when a game does like two boss fights, you know, like the boss fight and then the surprise boss fight. Yeah. It's kind of typical RPG. All right. And even if you threw in like a, a, a weird third one at the end, like some kind of weird thing going on. Okay. But they threw in like four to five at me. And after that, I was like, I can't do this. So I quit. I I turned it off because they did at least let you save after each and every one. Okay. Then last night I said, okay, come on. You you gotta do, you gotta finish this. It's the last one. It wasn't the last one, man. It wasn't the last one. It wasn't even the last one. Jeez. I had to go through another boss fight after that boss fight to finally finish it. So it was like six or seven boss fights all total, all right in a row. Cutscene, boss fight, cutscene, boss fight, cutscene, boss fight, all in a row. I'm like, this is ridiculous. You don't do this. This is a huge no no. And that's not. What Final Fantasy VII was when you got no. out of Midgard, you were out. You had like mm -hmm. two things: you had the big boss fight up on the roof, and then you had the motorcycle. And then game, the motorcycle escape, and then you left. And then you were free, exploration, all sorts of cool stuff. And instead, they were like, "No, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight." And I was like, "This is too many." Especially since throughout the game, they only had like three or four like big boss fights. So I'm like. Couldn't you just, like, put more boss fights and more cool events throughout the game? Yeah. Instead of just in the back end here, at the very end, having it just be boss fight extravaganza? It, was, it really bothered me, and it sucks because it's so damn good. The only thing I can think of is, since this was supposed to be a very episodic game, and then it took him, like, a million years to do this one, the only thing I can think is, like, since it is now just going to be, it's just going to be this game for forever until the next episode, whenever that is. I feel like maybe they crammed it all in at the back end to make it feel like an epic, whole big experience. You beat the game by going through the boss trial run, as opposed to you beat the boss on the roof, you had the fun motorcycle mini game, and then see you next time, whenever. I feel like people would kind of crap on that, but then uh -huh. at the same time, if you have like five to six bosses in a row that also weren't in the story anyway, like, how how can you do that? You shouldn't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, it, it it messed up what I was expecting and everything else. So it kind of brought me down at the end because I was hoping for that big finale and a big cool cutscene, and then I was gonna just drift off into happy land and yeah. be done with FF7 until the next one. That didn't happen. 
But either way, a fantastic game, a glorious game. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was great playing through it all over again. The last note I'll take before I ask you how your week went, Matt, was to let everybody know, if you're playing that and you, you get into boss fights, especially towards the end, the guides, like I got, t- like I told Matt the other day, I was like, I started getting annoyed. I was like, all right, I'm just going to look at the guide real quick and just cheat my way through this and see what this, you don't have to, those guides, they make it sound like these fights are like really difficult and crazy and you got to have all this specific material and gear on. Last night, I disregard everything I said and I just went with the builds and gear and the material I use and what I like on my characters and how I play them. I smoked it. I smoked it. Yeah. It wasn't an issue. I went through there and smoked the whole freaking house without any problems. But if you look at those guys, they make it look like it's about to be just a wreck shop of a day and it's going to be insane and you got to have all this particular items and do this and that. And I'm like, eh, no, you don't. If you know what you're doing and you guys got a really good build, just go with what you got. You'll be all right. So that was it, Matt. What about you, buddy? <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna segue that into a game that I was just playing recently and I did that exact same thing on, is I got back into just like two days ago, I was sitting around with my Switch and I put it in the dock to charge and I was like, man, I feel like, I feel like playing a game that's like in my hands. I feel like having wrestling on the TV or whatever and I just want to play something that just exists in my hands and it shines on my face and I look at it with my eyeballs and I walked over to the other room here and I grabbed my Vita out and I went, you know what? I'm going to start working on persona four golden again. I'm going to start getting through the end game of that. Juness is in my head. There you go. And I, I did some of those, you know, the, those lazy days at the end, got up to the ski trip and then went and, Oh man, here's the new dungeon. And I was like, all right, sweet new dungeon. And I was like, I didn't go into any dungeons in this whole like month prior to from the, you know, the end of the actual first game to this. I went, Hmm, I wonder if I'm under leveled, over leveled. Let me look up some guides for the bosses. Cause I don't care about the bosses. I'm here for the story. I don't care about the fights. Mm-hmm. And it went, Oh man, you got to start doing this. You got to make sure this character's this and this and this and this. And I was like, okay, I, I mean, boss strategy, I get it, but I didn't look at any boss strategy for the other ones. I just, hit it with elements until I found it one it was either weak to or my one spellcaster is really good at. And I just did that. And then I hit him with, with King key over here. And then I looked at someone else. I'm like, Oh man, the, for the four bosses that are coming up at the end for you, you gotta be at level 75 for this one. You gotta be level 85 for this one. And then 95 for these last two. I was like level 95. Are you freaking kidding me? I'm at 81 right now, and I smoked the last boss. Destroyed him with no problems at all. You know, the main game last boss. Like, I'm not leveling up 15 more levels. And then either GameFAQs or Reddit, to their credit, people were like, uh, no, I didn't have to be at level 95. What are you even talking about? So I, I got... <laughs> I got those same feels where I was just like, I just want to know a little bit. And they went, oh, you got to do all the blah, 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 And I was like, no, I'm I'm just, it soured my, it soured the experience that I wanted to have in reading the guides for the bosses. Because mm-hmm. I was just like, no, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to hammer it with physical attacks. I'm going to punch this guy a lot and he's going to die. And I'm going to heal and I'm going to use SP items. And there you go. I'm going to win. But getting back into Persona 4 Golden feels so good. Hanging out with all my friends. Again, it just it feels good. It feels right on a Saturday night. Same thing with Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's fun to spend time in a easygoing, fun game where everybody in the game loves you, and it's the complete opposite of real life, where everyone hates you and treats you like garbage. Animal Crossing, you're you're the king of the island, and everybody loves you, and it's great. There's not much else to say, so I will talk about Yakuza Like a Dragon a little bit because I've been streaming that a couple more times. Loving it, loving the gameplay, loving the, the RPG gameplay of it. Like I've said before, though, that game takes so long to get started. It's, it takes so long to say anything it's got to say. Not the side quests or the sub stories, but every single bit of the main quest. It's like, here's a five minute talk around. Here's another five minute talk around to get to the point where you got to run over there. To talk to somebody else. Oh, man. Ooh, man, Costco, what do you think about what that guy said? Oh, gosh, Namba, Hachi, gee whiz, I don't know. And it's not bad because I love the characters. I like the story so far. It has so much Yakuza stuff to distract yourself with, sub-stories and fun activities and crazy characters and going to the bar and, and singing karaoke and remembering your good days with Carl and how you want just want to cry on oh, his picture so at good. the bar. Yeah. Fantastic and amazing. <laughs> 
So it's a lot of fun. I just, sometimes I wish I could cut a little bit out of the, the, the presentation of the story and just have more time just running around town battling just random battles. Even the random, ba- the random battles are fun. I like them. So I don't know. I'm enjoying that. And then the last few days I've been getting into Hades super duper heavy. I think because I took such extended breaks from it in the past few weeks, I got into it and just ramming through that dungeon and escaping time after time after time, just absolutely nonstop. It feels so good. I feel so overpowered, even though I haven't made like big changes from one run to the next. I mean, my, my darkness mirror, its main aspects are all pretty much maxed out and have been for these past like seven to eight runs. But just all the different boon combinations that I'm finding now, they seem to synergize so much better that when I get to the last boss, it's a it's a joke. Like I, I posted on Twitter the other day, I got Aphrodite's call, which sends out a little heart and charms the enemy for like six seconds. And then I had all these like God gauge charge up abilities that, that all stacked together. So it was like, Boom, put a charge out. And then any enemy that I fought had two seconds after my first charm before they got charmed again. There was a two second gap in between. And it was just constant charms. Just boom, boom, boom. And I had the flurry jab on my spears. Like, whoop, 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 whoop. The gauge is just going whoop, charm, whoop, charm, whoop, charm. Absolutely ridiculous. And even for runs that I don't have super overpowered builds, I know that boss's movement and strategy so much that. Even if I'm playing super turtle cautious, it's just it's just a joke. The only way I could possibly lose is if I just ran into his face all the time. So I'm loving it. It's feeling so good. I actually just rolled credits on it today. I got a run and you know got the credits, got the whole big ending, and changed the way that things are going in the game. Made two more runs after that, which were just as easy, even though I'm steadily adding those hard modifiers to get up there. Man. The game is so much fun. I love just the action, clickety clickety clack, and all the buttons and dodging my dude all around and doing all the crazy stuff that I know how to do. Oof, feels so good. I love it. Got to play it again. I played it two times. Got to the Hydra on my second run, and I haven't touched it since. <laughs> uh, just if it, it fell, you know, it just kind of was like, yeah, this is gonna be great, and then. And I went FF7 remake. Bam. Well, now you got that out of the way. When you have one hour to kill. You can either do two, you know, short runs, or you can do one big, long, amazing run. One big, old, long run, yep. I got to get in there and get it for it, especially since there's uh, so many spots on the upcoming Game Awards mm-hmm. stuff for that game. I want to make sure I'm knowledgeable on it, because I, uh, I definitely got a nice, a nice uh, repertoire going this year. I've played a lot of those games or watched them be played from start to finish, so I need, I need to get Hades added on to that. Yes, you definitely do. And you mentioned the Game Awards, and we're going to get there in just a second. But something else we're knowledgeable about is shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands Game of the Edition and Borderlands 3. Randy Pitchford dropped in some magical Borderlands 3 codes, so hit up the Twitter, the Reddit, the forums, the Instagram. Hit up your preferred shift code provider. Get yourself some free loot in two fantastic games. You're especially going to want to get those Borderlands 3 Golden Keys because... They got the new Golden Path mini event that's going on right now. Oh, look at you segueing without me. Oh, okay. I see how it is. You couldn't resist, could you? I'm grown Double up. Gold. I don't need daddy to hold my hand no more. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Don't tell me what to do. That's right, folks. While you're getting those golden keys, you need to get on the Golden Path, boys and girls. It's the Golden Path mini event, November 19th through December 3rd. A big old nice window there for you to get in. Play some Borderlands 3, but not just play Borderlands 3. Go through the story, brand new, 60 frames per second, vertical screen with friends, all that good stuff. It's all up and running. It's all there for you. Play it. Have a good time. Special main events, you know, missions, etc. throughout the campaign are going to reward you with guaranteed legendaries as you roll out. What's not to like? Now, instead of just having a chance... You're for sure, while playing with your buddies and pals, going to get legendaries throughout these missions, which is going to help you out, give you the edge, kicking butt, taking names, get you all the way to the end so you can play the DLC, do the arms race, all that good stuff. This is absolutely fantastic. For me, this has been needed for a long time because you and I, we both together and or separately went through that campaign twice, all the way through on normal, all the way through on true vault hunter mode. And I said to myself when that was done... I'm never playing this campaign again. I've seen it all. I've seen it all twice. This is the one thing that could get me to do those story missions again. If we were just 
hanging out. Hey, man, want to do some runs? Want to do some story missions? Well, I told you. I told you. Yeah. This is, Heck yeah. I mean, it's coming. we'll get some legendaries guaranteed. Now, the one thing that does make me sad is this doesn't apply to the DLC. It doesn't apply to the side missions, anything like that. But I wish it did. But those are the things that I love playing. It's the main story that just to me is just I did it already. It's done. So for people like me, this is great. Hopefully they'll slowly broaden this out to the DLCs and all that stuff too. But I think it's great. It's a smart thing because this is the stuff that people aren't going to want to just sit there and grind through and play. Now you are going to want to do that because you're going to get them legendaries. Indeed you will. And of course, with this coming out, they also went ahead and did a little bit of patch, hot fixes, little, little notes. Nothing really that big to me. I didn't see anything nah. having issues, but I haven't played in a while either, so there's been nothing that's annoyed me or done anything. I see, though, for Gunner, the Iron Cub was occasionally prevented from scaling in Mayhem. I'm glad that was fixed because I would have never noticed it. I would have just said, oh, Iron Cub sucks or whatever. Or, I'm just going to respec into the other stuff. Exactly. So apparently that's fixed up. So that's the only thing that would have probably affected me. So, hey, it's done. It's fixed. I don't even got to deal with it because I haven't even played it and touched it yet. Yeah, like you, I haven't played much Borderlands 3 these past couple of weeks either. I do feel bad because I haven't even touched the arms race. But, again, we got that spoiled by the next gen stuff. I don't want to play it on the old gen, bobbity bobbity boo. And there's that's really no excuse because I can't play it on next gen anyway. I don't know. We need to get back in there. Even if well you'll be playing on the sixty frames per second. I'll be on I'll be on the PS5 time. with sixty frames per second. Oh yeah. So I'm ready to go. I'm gonna play all hopscotch and kimbong boogie. You know what I'm saying? Woo I don't even know what that is, but it sounds good. You know, I think I saw that in the list of Game Awards nominees. <laughs> one of those categories what? I didn't really understand. It was like one of the esports players or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> as always, every year when the Game Awards roll around, we do a The Game Awards special here on Third Shift where we tell you all our picks, all our nominations, who we think was going to win, all this stuff, and we're wrong 100% of the time, except we're not because we're smart fellas and we know what's going on. But I, I got to say, I was totally surprised that the nominees came out, what was it, yesterday? Because I was I was sitting in bed, I was getting ready to go to bed the day before, and it was like randomly like a promoted tweet from Jeff Keighley who said, hey, Game Awards nominees are coming out tomorrow. And I went, what? How? What? I guess like no news sites and nobody I follow on Twitter even knew that that was going to happen. So otherwise, if I didn't see that random promoted tweet, I wouldn't have even known. And now, boom, here they are right in our faces. And now it's everywhere, though. Now you would have seen afterwards because every single site in the world's got it up now. Yeah, yeah. Talking about it, who's got what, podcasts everywhere, talking about why, who got snubbed, who didn't get snubbed, who deserves it, why, blah, 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 blah. So we're, of course, here today, boys and girls, to give you our picks for who the hell's winning and taking it in the Game Awards this year. And then, of course, usually, sometimes, we didn't really discuss it. I think we cast out, we used to do two. We'd do who we think will actually get it and then who we want to get it. Right. Do we want to do that or just do who we think should get it? Our personal picks, you know? Now, I, I, obviously, I want to do personal picks. But if you think your personal pick isn't going to get it for a reason, then you're passionate about it. I would say, why not throw it out? I mean, we won't go into super de big detail about anything. Oh, yeah. I like it. And, of course, with that, we're going to start at the bottom of the tree. We're starting with the eSports team, Matt. Who's taking it, man? I know you pay attention to all these. I know you're in there watching them eSports. Who's got it? I don't watch none of this crap. I don't watch any eSports. I, I'm 100% sure that somewhere on here is a League of Legends team, but... The League of Legends teams I used to know are not on this anymore, so I have no idea. <laughs> the esports team, mm -hmm. I got nothing. I, you, I know you got nothing. You got nothing either. Oh, I do too. I got it. I'm telling you, the San Francisco Shock is taking it all the way, Matt. Why? All the way. Because you know why? Because podcasts tell me that they were really good, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun this season. <laughs> That's why. Because just like you listen to us out there, you take our opinions. You say, hey, my buddies Matt and Eric, they told me this thing was stupid or good or whatever. I do the same thing with other people as well. I go, sure. wow, they told me this was great. And everybody says San Francisco Shock was great. I don't know why because I didn't watch a single game or did anything involving it. But you know what? They play Overwatch and they must have did pretty good because everybody was real happy. So San Francisco Shock, 
hey, you got it. You're winning it. I feel it in my bones. Well, then we're going to roll on into eSports host because there's only one eSports host that I know, and that's Alex Goldenboy Mendez, my buddy, Woo! because he's associated with AEW, and I love AEW, so I love Alex Goldenboy Mendez. If anybody else wins it, Golden Boy got robbed. Golden Boy got robbed. The fix is in, folks. I don't know any of these people either, but I've heard of Alex Golden Boy Mendez because he was on another podcast that I listened to, and he was funny and a pretty nice guy. So you know what? Hope Alex Golden Boy Mendez wins. I don't know what this AEW stuff you're talking about is, but it sounds great, too. You're going to take it, Mendez. I have faith. <laughs> and if you want to talk about Wowzers Wowzy, the best esports game of all time, I don't care what comes out, what comes and goes, what's up, what's down. The best esports game ever is League of Legends. That gets my pick. That's what should win. Do I think it's going to win? I think Valorant's going to take it because that was the hotness for the first half of the year or something. But League of Legends should always win. It gets my vote. That's what should it. It's what should win. Rubber stamp it. Boom. It's done. And here's where we finally change up the course of reality here, because Fortnite's actually taking it. No, it's not. This year, Fortnite has been smoking it. All right, they've had so many really cool events out there. They've done so much great stuff with that game, and made everyone just pay attention to Fortnite over and over and time and time again. You may be right. But wouldn't that be something for ongoing game and not esports game? Because they've had cool, nah, just, cool events and it's just the it's just the best game, man. It's gonna win. I, I see exactly where you're going, and you're right. But I don't care. It's just <laughs> Fortnite's got it. It's taking all the categories. <laughs> well, don't even try. Don't even try to use logic, rationale. That pff, I don't know what that stuff is. My job teaches me that all that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you see where I'm going on that, you should definitely see where I'm going with esports event. Because what's the best esport on the planet? League of Legends. What's the best esport event on the planet? League of Legends World Championships 2020. I will say the one esport that I ever got into watching was League of Legends. I loved watching the little tournaments, the little brackets. For like a year and a half, I got into it. So League of Legends always gets my vote. It gets my vote here too. Boom, ba boom, boom. I'm going with the Overwatch League Grand Finals, okay? Good old 2020. I heard all about it. I, I didn't watch it this year at all, like I already told you, but I've heard all about it. It's been everywhere. There was commercials out there for it. That freaking podcast the shows were talking about it. You get into the Overwatch itself and you couldn't see anything but, hey, watch Overwatch League. Get this, get that, get that. Yeah. They've done a fascinating, awesome job of just like throwing that game out there and promoting it everywhere and making sure that whether or not you pay any attention to this stuff, you're going to at least hear about Overwatch League. So I think they're going to take it. Sounds good. Moving on to eSports Coach. There's a person here named Grabs. And, you know, I, my my hands are named Grabby and Squeezy. So I'm voting for Grabs because, you know, my left hand says it must be so. You know, I was I had a hard time with this one because I really i am in on this. You know what I'm saying? I really pay attention <laughs> to these coach people and what they're doing out there. And I was like, God, man, Krusty. Wow. Krusty knows what's happening. You know, anybody named Krusty. They gotta know what's happening because they've been around. They've been in the game a long time. That's how you get crusty. That's just the way it is, you know? I was just gonna say, you want your coach to be named Krusty. He's gonna have one eye, bald, big old grizzled beard, leaning on a cane. Mm -hmm. I will tell you how you, how you, Ca how you tank League of Legends, bro. Yeah, he's gonna smell a whiskey constantly. Yeah, this is a good person to have as your coach. They're really gonna lead you to the great and mighty things that you're looking for. So, Krusty. You're going to get it. I have faith in you. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> Speaking of people who will never disappoint you, the best esports athlete on the planet, it's Kim Canyon Jung Boo, because the name Canyon reminds me of Eric's Grand Canyon plan, and that makes me happy, so that person gets my vote. You stole it, Matt, because I was going <laughs> to vote Canyon, too, because I said yes. he knows what's up. Me and him are going to be on the cliffside together uh -huh. having a good old time on our <laughs> last day. Maybe I'm going to trick him. And it's throwing me off instead of vice versa, uh -huh. and he'll be in trouble. So we'll see, Canyon. Meantime, hey, good luck to you. I hope you take that best esports athlete and get a million trillion dollars and make everything and do all the cool stuff that I'll never do. Speaking of making a million trillion dollars, next up, content creator of the year. Again, the fix is in. I've been motherfucking snubbed once again because the content creator of the year is motherfucking me. I am the best. I have the best streams. I do the best podcast. I'm the best man who's ever lived. I say it in on the podcast, greatest man who's ever lived. I'm the best. I should win this again this year for the however many year in a row. You know, I'm glad you went that route. I'm going to say 
I feel like my name should have been put in the running. I don't know if I should have won it, but I feel like my name should have been up there. I'm definitely as cool as Tim the Tat Man. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like I've totally got it. I can be bald, too. I can grow a beard, too. I can make jokes. You know, I can do the same things he can do. So I'm right in that. I'm right in there. I I should be on this list. I should be in place of him because I got my first crown in Fortnite like two days in, and he got his like two years in. So come on. Yeah. Who's who's the best content creator? It's me. You know, and then you, yeah, you you as know. like second place. Yeah, second or third. You know, I'm fine with that. I'm right in there. I like it. That's all I wanted. Now, who do I think will probably get it? I don't really know. I do pay attention to a few of these in a serious note, but uh I'll just go with Tim the Tat Man. Because you know what? He's been in several of the different streams I've actually paid attention to that I do watch. And he's not a bad individual. He seems like a pretty cool guy, pretty calm, chill, except for when he's not, when he's doing like the bits and when he's, uh, when he, well, like you said, when he was doing that whole stupid Fall Guys bit mm-hmm. where he couldn't get it and then the whole world watched him try to get his Fall Guys thing. Props to him. That was a great bit. Got him a billion, jajillion dollars and followers and everything else on top of it. So cool. Hope he gets it. Why the hell not? Speaking of why the hell not. Best multiplayer to game. You know what? I do want to vote for Animal Crossing New Horizons because it is fun. I've played it with a friend. It is fun in multiplayer. But Among Us took the world by storm. So I'm voting for Among Us on this. They should get it. Fall Guys is fun, but I don't know that it's a fun multiplayer game. Because if you make it and your buddy doesn't make it, that's not fun. Or if your buddy makes it and you make it, that's that's a little more fun, but it's not as fun. Among Us, you play with your buddies. You say, oh my God, I totally saw Eric kill James in the corner. I saw him go vent. But you're the one who did that. And you frame Eric and he gets tossed out the airlock. That stuff's awesome. It's all, it's totally Battlestar Galactic all over again. You ain't, you ain't sending Colonel Ty out there, Evan. I'll tell you that much right now. It's not <laughs> happening. All right. So I'm 100% in agreement with you. Uh, Animal Crossing shouldn't be on this list, if you ask me. I, I don't really see that as like a multiplayer like game. As in, I, I know you can have your friends come to your island, but right. I don't know. That's more like a fun thing, not really like a multiplayer game. Yeah. And uh, Fall Guys was fun to play with people, but like you said, yeah, it was just you're basically still on your own. You're just trying to win. Mm-hmm. Your friends are there, but they're just trying to win. You're just trying to win. Among Us, oh, that's an experience. Yeah. I've watched so much Among Us. And I dream that I had friends that I could play a game with. Same thing, I don't, yeah. But I dream, I dream of it because Among Us, oh, we would be dying of laughter and having uh-huh. fun if only I had the friends to play with because that game is amazing. And that's a great way to get friends together and do just the most despicable things and have such a great time. I laughed hysterically over and over again at all those different streams I watched. Yeah, I, I agree. I've watched like the, the AEW wrestlers will occasionally get together and play Among Us and watching them, watching this guy get killed by the actual imposter, but then somebody happens to walk in the room accidentally after he leaves and then like disappears and the other guy catches and totally thinks that this happened when it totally didn't happen. You saw it live on somebody else's screen. And then just the just the BS table talk, like innocent table talk and then malicious table talk too. I had that exact conversation with James and Brian, and I think Shay was there too at one of the bonfires that you missed out on. I was like, God, that game looks so good. I wish I could play it with all of you guys. And we'd all get on our headsets and we'd drink beers and we'd just be the worst horrible people, but then die and laughing the whole time. God, I... It's got to win best multiplayer game, and I've got to find a way to play it with all my friends. Someday. Maybe. I don't know, Matt. I feel like it's one of those we should try to do, but that's for another day. We'll we'll figure that out. Up next, though, is something that's near and dear to both of our hearts, because you got sports racing game, and you know me and Matt. We we play the hell out of them sports racing games. Woo. I love sports yeah. racing. It's my favorite genre. Probably mine too. I have no idea what should win this, but I'm going to say what shouldn't is NBA 2K21 because I've been seeing the hashtag make 2K fun again because everybody hates it. So I'm going to pick an anti-winner and say it's going to be that. Man, that's a weird way to go voting. I'm going to say it's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 because everybody's been dreaming and wishing for Tony Hawk to come back. And it did. They re-released them, remastered them, did the whole nine yards to them, made them all spiffy, but brought back all the wonderful music and levels, etc. from the old games. On top of some new cool stuff as well, I think it's going to take it. I think people are still enamored with it, still having a great time with it. It's fresh on everyone's minds. 
and it's new. I mean, these other games, they've all been around forever. And Tony Hawk was too for a long time, mm. but then it went away. That resurgence, that comeback, I think is going to kind of take the votes. Coming up, a genre that we actually do like, sim slash strategy games. For me, I haven't played any of these. I haven't even watched anybody play any of these, but I got that Xbox now. And I didn't even know Gears Tactics was out until I went on it. And I was like, oh, hey, you can download Gears Tactics. No, went, maybe I'm going to get that off of Game Pass and download it now. So that's going to get my vote because I hope it's going to be good when I start playing it. Well, you don't got to hope any longer, Matt, because I watched about 9 to 12 hours worth of gameplay nice. of Gears Tactics. And it is awesome. It's amazing. It's really, really freaking awesome and cool. I was going to get it on the PC, but then got distracted with a billion other things. And now, of course... I can still get it for the Game Pass at some point in time here in the near future. Uh, and I think it's going to come to other... I don't remember. It might be coming to other stuff too, but it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant for this conversation. I'm going with Gears Tactics because I have watched it. I have seen it played a lot, and it looks great. And the other games I haven't really played or seen much of, except for XCOM Chimera Squad, which I watched a couple hours worth of gameplay, and that looks good too. But Gears Tactics is taking it for sure. Nice. Coming up at Family Game, I played two of these games, shockingly enough. Actually, I've played three of these games. Wow. This is probably the, the category I've played the most of. Look at you. But, but I fell out of Fall Guys. I fell out of Paper Mario even. So Family Game for me, Animal Crossing New Horizons, because you can build up a little island with your whole family. Make this area this. Make this person's house look like that. You know, dress up the island however you want. It's a fun little innocent family game. And like I said, there's no violence. There's no winning, no losing. Everybody loves you. It's great. It's perfect for the family. This is this is we've always discussed it, and other people discuss it too. It's a weird category because, like Paper Mario, the Origami King, really cool, really fun. I have it as well, mm -hmm. but I don't really consider that a family game yeah. that much. It's more of just you just play it and have fun, and sure your family can play it because obviously it's you know meant for children and adults alike. But you're not really sitting as a family playing it. And the same even goes for Animal Crossing, really. In all, most of these games, to be honest, except for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Right. That one you can just, you actually build at your house and stuff. So it's, you know, it's just weird. This one I don't have a stake in that much because I've played and dabbled in, you know, like you said, many of these games or seen them played. But I think Animal Crossing's probably going to get this one just because of how important it's been this year and how so many friends and family have connected through Animal Crossing, you know, during the times where they're, you know, being forced to stay home and all that other crap. So Animal Crossing is going to get my vote on this one as well. Nice. Coming up, best fighting game. There's only one that I've played on here, and it's a game that I sunk an entire weekend into. Street Fighter V Champion Edition. It's Street Fighter. Street Fighter is always awesome. There are so many characters and stages and costumes and unlocks in the Champion Edition. You can't go wrong. So it gets my vote because not only is it the only one I've played, it's a fantastic game. And I'm going to differ from you today. I'm going Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Have I played this game? Nope. Do I know anything about this game? No. Do I, do I know anything about any of these other games? Not really. I mean, I've played Street Fighter V, but, you know, whatever. I only voted Grand Blue Fantasy because I've watched the anime. And it was fun. It was great. It there was a go. good time. The anime is superb. Well, I wouldn't say the, the story is okay, but the actual animation, you know, that it's superb. Really good job on it all. Mm -hmm. So I'm going Grand Blue just because the anime was good and I had a great time with it. So there you go. Best fighting game. You're taking it home, Grand Blue. Do me proud. Coming up, it's the category that will determine if we are still friends or not after we talk about this. Best RPG. There's only one choice here, which is Persona 5 Royal. Anybody who chooses anything else is a punk and a bastard. So what are you picking, Eric? I'm really mad at this one, man. I'm mad at this one. <laughs> because here's the deal, and I won't go into too much detail because we got to keep rolling, but I will say this. Persona 5 Royal is the best game uh, forever, of all time. Yeah. It was supposed to be the game of the year. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And so I'm supposed to be able to vote for Final Fantasy VII Remake here because uh, Persona 5 Royal is supposed to be at the top, top. Yeah, yeah. And then I vote for that there where it needs to be, where it should be, where it deserves to be. And then I can give props to my FF7 Remake because it needs props and it does need love because it is a fantastic game. But alas, the Game Awards didn't do what it should have done. And so here I am now having to watch Final Fantasy VII Remake go by the wayside in this particular category because there's no other vote than Persona 5 Royal. It's just the way it is. And I'm in the same boat for Yakuza Like a Dragon. I would love for it to get some shine and some love right here because I don't think it's going to anywhere else. 
But Persona 5 Royal the Juggernaut is here, and I have to vote for it, and I can't give any love to Yakuza. So sorry, Yakuza. Mm-hmm. But the other game that I love more than you even is here, so you're done. Yep, that's just the way it goes. And then, of course, we come upon Action Adventure Game. Wow. God bless. I've looked at these, and I've played or watched the entirety of a gameplay of pretty much all of them, ex- oh, all of them except Ori. Mm-hmm. So... Oh, this is a tough one. This is a toughie, okay? Because I try to remember how much fun I had with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, you yeah. know, but this was last year now, so it's a long time ago. And I remember really liking it and having a great time with it, but Ghost of Tsushima is so fresh mm-hmm. and so right there in my mind. And, of course, Last of Us 2 is good, but it's not my jam, even though I did watch it all the way through and play it. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was really good, but once again, that's not really my jam. I don't really get down with the big open world goofy stuff like that usually so ghost of tsushima has to take it for me because that's the one i have played that's the one i've beaten that's the one i've platinum that's when i go into the the legends and i'm still having fun in, and still want to have more fun in so you're gonna take it because you did such a great job sucker punch and i hope to see you get more awards and more credentials to so get more people that are awesome at their job coming to you and make it even more ghost tsushima i 100 percent agree with everything you said except you use the words freshest and hottest in your mind but the freshest and hottest in the minds of all the voters is going to be marvel spider-man miles morales that's going to take it although i wish it was ghost tsushima because it encapsulates it perfectly it's action and adventure you're on this grand sprawling thing and they did such an amazing job with it. Ghost should win. I don't think it will just because of Spider-Man being here. And and Miles Morales is really good. Well, yeah, I'm, so, not, I'm not saying it's bad right. or anything, but it's going to be the freshest, hottest HDR yeah, textures, no. frame rate. I don't think it – it just stinks because I think overall I think uh, Ghost has more to it. Yeah. And is, well, it is a much larger game as well. So just I think a lot more love, care, and et cetera. That's not fair to say. So I don't want to say that because that's not what I may mean. I know Miles Morales had a lot of work into it too, a lot of love and care. Yeah. But just so much more, I think, I had to get put in a ghost than Miles because they were able to reuse assets from Spider Man, that kind of thing, et cetera, et cetera. But it is fantastic. I don't want to. I don't want to agree with you, though, man. I want to believe that Ghost will get some accolades here. You know, so I'm just gonna ignore that and <laughs> close my eyes. Well, just ignore that because we're going on to best action game. For me, there's only one choice here because it's the only game I've played. I'm voting for Hades. And when I saw this category, I was thinking this isn't really a good category for Hades because to me, Hades is not just the in-game action. It's all the story, all the characters, all the buildup, all the world all around it. But then since I've been playing it nonstop for a week, this is a fast action game. Like when you play it and you're... You know, I almost say like doing high level play of it, but when you're doing that high level play, you are dashing and moving and juking and jiving and chucking and out all your abilities fast and furious and wild. Hades gets my vote. I probably don't think it's going to win because people won't think of it as an action game, but it totally is one and it does deserve to win. What about you? I would say you're partially right, okay? It's an action game, but it ain't an action game like Doom Eternal is an action game, all right? Doom Eternal is an action game. You don't stop. And it's just pure action, pure madness, pure chaos. Hades has slow times. Hades has bits where you're in the palace talking to your buddies, doing RPG things, petting dogs. Oh, let me pet Fluffy, the little chubby dog. You know what you do with Doom Eternal? You keep killing. You never stop killing. You know what? Every time you go to your ship, you're like, oh, okay, yay. Your ship's infiltrated. You keep killing. You kill, you kill, you kill. No, 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 stop Mr. Eric. It. You may have forgotten, but I remember those two streams you did all year where you like you killed one room and then you stood around and you went, what's that? What's over there? Let me try and jump. I didn't jump. I didn't make it. Hang on. Hang on. Look, I'm going to run over here. I'm going to look in this corner. I'm going to stick my nose in that corner. I'm gonna, That's me I'm trying gonna, to find the uh, secrets, all right? It's and got some slow times. Did. I'm just saying. You're two streams I did all year. Oh, it hurts, <laughs> man. It hurts. It was more than two, you bastard. I'm just with you. <laughs> Goodness. But yes, Doom Eternal has it in the bag. I think uh, there's other spots where Hades can take it. So I think for sure Doom Eternals, this is where they get their little vote. Now, next two categories, I don't think either of us have much to say. Innovation and accessibility. I've heard really good stuff about the Watch Dogs accessibility options. Same with Last of Us Part Two. Same with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I'd know nothing about it because 
I am an accessible man, so I don't have any problems or don't need any of these things. So props to you guys who did great stuff in this category, but I have no pick. I'm in the same boat. I don't have a clue as to who did a great job, who didn't, because I'm just a normal human with all my faculties about me. So I don't think about it, and therefore I have no say. So like you said, man, I mirror that. Congrats to everybody who was in there putting in the hard work to make sure everybody can play these games. And whoever takes it, kudos to you. And hopefully, hopefully everybody else learns a little bit from you and adds all that and more to their games so anybody can play. Up next, best VR AR game. I was going to say I had nothing to say on this, but Dreams is in this category. Dreams is a game that I totally wanted to play and totally wanted to get into and create cool games in and never got a chance to even touch it all year. So Dreams, I hope you win, but I don't know anything about you or any of these other items. And I do have VR, but I haven't played any of these titles on this list because uh, VR kind of fell by the wayside because there's too many other real normal games to play. And so there you go. But I have heard nothing but good stuff about Star Wars Squadrons, and that would be the game out of these five that I would probably buy and play. So therefore, I'm going with Star Wars because it's a big name. It's got some really cool stuff from what I hear going for it. And it's one I would honestly go buy and play at this very moment. If you said, Eric, go buy one VR game and play it, that'd be it. Another one to totally pretty much just blow through community support. I'm going to vote for No Man's Sky because it's still around and is getting big patches and updates and cool things for a dead game that everybody said was poo-poo garbage like two, three, four, five, six, seven years ago. So props to you, No Man's Sky. Get some love. Man, I would say a shout out to Destiny 2 because, you know, I've played Destiny 2 forever. But they annoy the hell out of me. Uh, they always say they're going to change and do crazy new stuff, but it always ends up just being more Destiny. So you know what? I can't give it to you, boys and girls. I got to give it to Fortnite because even though I don't even play Fortnite anymore, it's all I hear about. It's all everybody just constantly is like, dude, Fortnite just went bananas again. Sure. Fortnite just did this again. Fortnite just went crazy again. Fortnite just did this newest, coolest thing you've ever, ever seen before again, 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 again. That's all I ever hear about is them innovating and doing something crazy and new and fascinating all the time. So therefore, Fortnite, get yourself some more awards. You need them. You need them all. Up next, Eric's favorite category, best mobile game. I'm going to give some props to, I'm going to say Among Us again because it's on the iOS now, I do want to vote for Legends of Runeterra because I downloaded it to my phone. And I was like, cool, a League of Legends card game. I'm going to play this. And I clicked the icon once and it didn't start. And then I clicked it again and it didn't start. And I went, okay, I'm done with you forever. So go Among Us. You could do it. I'm going Genshin Impact because there's this really crazy weird dude at work who's always coming up. And he's always like, hey, look what I did today in this weird game or whatever. He does like gaming tournaments and weird stuff. And oh, yeah, he yeah. likes to talk to me. It's very strange. But anyways, he goes, check it out. You heard of Genshin Impact? I said, yeah, I've played it on PS4 a few times. It's pretty cool, but I don't really want to get lost in it. I got too many other things to do. And he goes, come over here. And he shows me his phone and he's playing Genshin Impact. And it's freaking gorgeous. Mm hmm. I mean, it's gorgeous. It looks just like it does on the PS4, literally. Yeah. And he's just running around, killing baddies, doing what he's got to do, having a great time. And I went, "That's just a, it's just a real video game on the phone. That's just a real video game he's just playing. And I went, there it is. They're, they're doing it. They're doing it, folks. Mm -hmm. Real, just regular old video games on phones. And I went, son of a bitch. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it. I hate it with every fiber of my being. <laughs> but I got to give it to you, Genshin Impact, because you look there just as good on that phone as you did on my PS4 Pro. So take it. Up next, best debut indie game. There's only one game I've played on this list. I've heard good stuff about every single one of them from all the indie game stuff that I watch and listen to. But Carrion's the one that I've played the demo of. And that game is awesome and amazing and cool. And you're a disgusting, weird monster eating scientists and ripping them apart. What's that to love about Carrion? I wholeheartedly agree. I have seen quite a bit of gameplay of the Phasmophobia. A lot of people playing that, having a great time. And I thought it was super cool how you got to interact and talk the ghost out. And then how you do stuff with each other to you know get the pictures of it and get the different checkpoints so you can leave and say that and get your money and all. It's really cool. But Carrion... It's really fun to play. It was definitely one of those titles where both of us were like, we're going to get it, we're going to beat it, and we didn't get around to it, and I'm just sad because it was a lot of fun, and I still to this day want to play it and want to beat it, and maybe I will, but I hope it gets some love. So that was the best debut indie game. Here's the best indie game overall. 
Out of these, I've played three in the demo of four of them. But to me, there's no choice. There's no pick. It's got to be Hades because I've sunk 30 some hours into it. I want to sink 30 more hours into it. Hades is amazing, but I'm a little bit split because I think, well, I think Fall Guys might ultimately get it. But the only thing that could compete with Hades is Spelunky 2 because of those amazingly fun runs I've been having those last few times I've played Spelunky 2. That game is also amazing. So depending on if you like roguelikes or roguelites, you got two choices here for me. This is a tough category because all five of these games are really awesome in their own way. I've watched gameplay and or played several of these titles, and it's a hard pick because Carrion deserves it. They all deserve it. But I'm going to go with Fall Guys for this one because they, they got snubbed later on in the list. And I think they deserve props this year for what they did. They were, you know, they were definitely, they were a nice chunk of moment yeah. in everybody's lives for a while. So they need some props. They need some love. And I think this is where you give it to them. So Fall Guys is taking best indie. And then best ongoing game. Hey, here's something we talked about earlier. We teased it. Best ongoing game for me. Again, No Man's Sky is going to be the only thing that gets a vote here. I haven't played any of them, not even much No Man's Sky, but the fact that it's still around and still ongoing that gets my vote right there. And for me, I'm going with Destiny 2 in this one. Now, I already told you I was upset because they don't really change much, but guess what? They don't change much, and they still have millions of players always playing their game, and they're always getting new content, and the story keeps progressing. And uh, they have no signs of slowing or stopping, so I'm giving Destiny 2 its props right here because even with my issues, I still love the game and still want to play it. So, hey, kudos to you, Destiny. Next up, a category that I'm never really sure what to what to say about or how to think about it. Games for Impact, but there's one game that I've played on here. It's the game that took like seven or eight years to finally finalize itself. Kentucky Route Zero. It's an amazing game. I don't know that it fits the category necessarily, but I love that game. And this is the only place it's on the list. So it gets some love for me right here. Well, this one I don't have much to say on. Uh, I've only seen a little bit of Spirit Fair played. So I'm going to go with that because that's the only one I really know anything about besides what little, you know, Matt said about Kentucky Route Zero. So Spirit Fair, hey, give me give me some love. I, I hope you win and, and get me the big bucks that Matt will owe me when I get all the votes right. <laughs> yeah. Next up is performance, and I'm so torn on this one because I always vote for Laura Bailey in here because she was the boss, the female boss in Saints Row 4, and it would be my favorite voice actress ever. But – Logan Cunningham is here, who plays Hades in Hades and like six other characters in Hades, most of which sound completely different from each other. So once I found out that that dude did all of those characters, this is also the narrator for Bastion. He's in, He's been in all the other Supergiant games. He does so much in Hades. He's not just Hades to make that world and, and all those characters breathe. Logan Cunningham 100% gets my vote here. Not even close. Sorry, everybody else. No way. You all played one character. This dude played six or seven or eight or nine or 40. The guy's awesome. You got a point, Matt. You got a point. But he's only being checked up on as Hades. And Hades was cool, but, you know, he didn't, it's not like, well, I've only done two rounds, so it's not like I know all the times he talks. Uh-huh. But he's only said a few words. And you know what? I've seen... Najee Jeter and Miles Morales. I've seen Ashley Johnson as Ellie, you know, Laura Bailey as Abby. And of course, I'm not pronouncing that name right. I'm going to screw it up. Jin Sake, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I can't, I can't go with you on this one, even though I think you're probably right. He probably does deserve a lot of really cool accolades. I've got to go with Laura Bailey. So we're switching it up. I'm okay. going with Laura Bailey this time as Abby because I hate her. I hate her so much. I wanted to choke her to death throughout the entire game. And I said, well, if you can make me want to choke you to death, you've made me feel something that I normally, well, I, I normally feel it all the time. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. No, you did a great job. You made me hate that character, and rightfully so. And, of course, I know they didn't want that to be the case. They wanted you to kind of get a, a reverse of that and see their life and whatever, but. No, she made sure you understood what kind of human she was, and it was a human that I despised, and I thought it was a fantastic job. So, Laura Bailey, hopefully you take it. Next up, audio design. I only have played one of the games on this list, Ghost of Tsushima. It sounds like samurais running around, you know, through the grass and cutting people and hitting people with swords and shooting arrows at them. So that gets my vote because it sounds 
like they designed it to be ghost and it was ghost. Mm, this one was another one that's kind of tough for me because Doom Eternal, man, just the audio, everything in there just makes you want to keep killing, makes you want to keep fighting and going. But I don't want to say it's a one trick pony, but it kind of is. You know, the whole yeah. thing is just about motivation and push. Whereas I think uh, Ghost of Tsushima has all them different moments and when the wind blows and this and that's going on, you know, a lot of finesse to it. Last of Us 2 is the same thing. Just the sound effects made you feel like it was real life. You know, you'd hear the the dog barking in the distance, the shouts from over here, the the weird birds, the explosions, this and that. It was really surreal, kind of like, you know, in your ears going for you. So it's a toughie for me. But I'm going to go with Ghost of Tsushima on this one just because... Once again, I had such a fantastic time with it, and it was so well done audio-wise. I can't say that it's a bad choice. Cool. There's only one choice for me for scoring music as well, because I've only played one of these games, and it's Hades. And this is a very underrated part of Hades. I think I've said it before on Third Shift proper, and if not, it was on the Watch Plan. The music in that game is phenomenal. When you are fighting bosses for decently long times, when you don't just crush them like I do, you can sit back and appreciate how badass that boss theme is. How rocking, how rolling, how cool. I love everything about it. When that title screen music hits, it gets me pumped. When the boss music hits, that gets me pumped. I love the score music in Hades. Again, I haven't played anything else, but Hades deserves some love for here. I think this is a category that's going to get overlooked in, though. Yeah, I'm going to overlook it because FF7 Remake is going to be my vote here. I know I just said that the music in Doom Eternal is fantastic, but once again, you can't. If you're if you're a patron, you're going to hear it, my my notes and talk recently about FF7 and what it does for me. And it does it all over again in the remake, but even better because they got orchestrated for everything in there. So every song, everything is just beautiful and just gives you all sorts of thoughts and emotions and ties all the different towns and events all into this this thing that they want you to feel and see it in here and they do such a wonderful job with it so ff7 remake i hope it takes it it deserves it coming up next is art direction this is what i'm torn on because hades's art direction is great i love the way the characters look i love the way the world looks i love the look of the house of hades when you're in it and then all the things you can do to change it up, spoiler alert for anybody, all the things that you can place down in as you're working with the contractor, it makes it come alive, it makes it pop, it makes it look fresh and cool, but nothing beats Ghost of Tsushima when you come out of the forest and you see that big old vista of flowers or you're on top of the mountain and you see that overlook and you can see, you know, from one coast to the other, essentially, or you're going through that bamboo forest. That's just absolutely ridiculous. The look of ghost of Tsushima wins it for me. And just cause there's nothing else that looks like that. I mean, until the next thing that looks like it, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but it looks amazing. It's, it makes every vista worth it. You know, I don't know. I think it's great. I think it's gorgeous. I think ghosts should get it here. I'm in the same boat. Uh, I think Hades is gorgeous as well, just like you said. FF7. Ori is freaking gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all these games, all these, this sucks because all these games deserve it, I think. I think all of them do a fantastic job mm -hmm. in the art direction and, and how you just feel inside of it. But for me, like you said, Ghost takes it. I mean, the, when all the flowers are floating around and then you cut into the trees and it gets dark and there's like the little the little lanterns kind of mm -hmm. popping up and, and the little night flies and whatnot going around. And you can't beat that. It just feels so dang good. And there's so many different environments to hop into and see and, and get into involved in. And, oh, yeah, ghost. Whew, taking it. Coming up, best narrative. I know this is where Eric's definitely going to have – he's going to have a big old strong pick and he's going to love it. I haven't played that game yet, but I have played Hades and Ghost of Tsushima, obviously. But to me, Hades gets it because of the evolving narrative that takes into account the cycle of you dying. The game is around you making these runs and dying and restarting and going over it again. The fact that that's worked into the narrative at all is amazing, but then the way that – the story builds on itself. The more runs you go on, the the more you talk to these characters, the more you get to know them, 
They start telling you about their past, their struggles, and you find side characters that can help them out with all that. I think they did a fantastic job all, with Hades all, all around, all over the place. But this is another underrated category for it, in my opinion, because people think, oh, it's that one you run around, you, you hack up gods and stuff. Uh, but the story in Hades is fantastic. I've just finished it today, and it was fantastic and lovely. Hades gets my vote here. Well, I there's another category where all of them have a great story, a great narrative. I like them all. I wish all of them the best. I enjoyed these games. But 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, man. I'll tell you what, I've talked about it on the show proper. I've talked about it on some of our patron-only stuff. The narrative in this game is insane. It's stupid insane. Like, it just, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It takes a puzzle piece and then pop. And then pop, and then pop, and then pop, 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 pop. And all of a sudden, all the things and all the stories and all the characters, they start linking and meshing. And then the story starts to just fit into place. And it is super rare that you see stuff like that happen, especially in video games, when they take one idea and just pop little pieces on it at a time. And then your eyes just open wider and wider and wider and wider to see everything that was around you the whole time and what's going on. 13 Sentinels does that, plus it's gorgeous to boot. The characters are just fantastic. They've got that same whole vibe that Persona does. You know, you I want little statues now, you know, of, of the 13 Sentinels characters. I want to I wanna get them stickers and decorate my little hobbit hole down here with all the cool 13 Sentinel stuff, but it's so expensive and it all comes from Japan and I can't afford it, but I want it. It's a great game. This is where it gets its moment at. Best narrative for sure. Y'all are some psychopaths if it doesn't get picked. Coming up next, here's a category that's really tough for me. Most anticipated game, because I don't anticipate none of these. You don't? Nothing. You don't anticipate any of them? Nothing, man. Nothing. Huh. That's weird, dude. Okay, well, for me, hmm, God of War sequel. You know it, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I'll... I can't. I, I was. I was kind of. Elden Ring, Scott. I want to love that game, but I already know what's going to happen to that game, and the future's already been foretold. I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to get hit, and I'm going to tell, say something to the wrong person, and I'm going to end up in some hole living with rats somewhere again, and I'm not going to understand how I can fix myself or get out, and it's going to. It's going to end tragically. So I want to say Elden Ring because. I know it has the potential to be one of the grandest games ever, but God of War sequel, I know for a fact it's going to be fantastic, and I know for a fact I'm going to play the hell out of it and love every minute of it because the previous God of War is still probably one of the best games of all time. So, God of War, do it. You take it, boy. So just to, boy. El- just to elaborate on it for me, I'm not a Halo guy, not a God of War guy, not a 3D Legend of Zelda guy, not a Resident Evil guy. I played a little bit of Horizon earlier this year, but not enough to get into it to be a Horizon guy. I don't even know what Elden Ring is. All I know is it's from from software, and I ain't playing that. No, I don't want. I'm not touching any from <laughs> software games. Get out of here. Oh goodness, man! You know, to say it's a sad day that you're not a God of War guy or Horizon guy. I don't. I don't know, man. I feel like you're just going down a dark path, and I don't know if I can get you back. Well, see, I I wanted to finish and play more of Horizon, but it got sandwiched in between, I think, Persona 5 and whatever it was I had finished right before that. And now, oof, why am I going to go back and stream that? <laughs> Who golly, play a PlayStation 4 ever again? Get out of town. Hey, just play that one on your own. Play it on the PlayStation 5 when you get it, you know, with all of its little jazzed up, whatever it ends up having. I don't know. But next up, we got Game Direction. It's another category that I'm not really sure how to how to vote or how to assess game direction. Ghost of Tsushima is fantastic. Hades is fantastic. To me, all of Hades just blends together. There's never a moment that I'm like taken out of the game at all, ever. I mean, especially because even your cycle of life or death, it's in the game. I don't know. To me, Hades gets it just because I love Hades and Hades is cool and Hades should get all the votes and Hades, Hades, you can do it. Hades, go, Hades, go. And I'm going to go with FF7 Remake here because even though I told you at the start, I didn't like the end with all the seven, eight bosses, the rest of that game, superb. And even though seven bosses was, they were all great bosses. It was all a lot of fun. It just was too much at the end for what I was, what I was going for. But how you can take this, this one particular event in an RPG and then expand it all the way out into its own entire game and not only just expand it but make it fun 
make it great, make it cool, make it so you want to keep getting on and play, that requires a lot of work. That requires a lot of love. That requires a lot of dedication to not only expand and make it so you can play a whole RPG in this little tiny expanse of the actual original game, but then on top of it all, keep all the characters the way they were, the way they sound, the way they feel, the story play out the way it was supposed to, for the most part with some minor deviations, but overall the way it's supposed to. That's That takes some craziness. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And I got to give them props right here. They deserve this one, in my opinion. I cannot wait to see what they do now that we're out of Midgar. I'm I'm on the edge of my seat, but I know I got to wait about 9 to 12 years. So it'll be retirement time. It'll be perfect. Right in time to retire and play. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and then for disc <laughs> three, you won't survive until you'll be dead. I will. I'll be dead. I'll be dead. I'll never know the end, but hey, it'll been a great journey. <laughs> and speaking of great journeys, every single game here in the Game Awards Game of the Year category will take you on a great journey. And I'm torn three ways about this, obviously, with the three games that I've played. Ghost of Tsushima was fantastic. It took me on an awesome, epic adventure. There were some dips in there, but then the highs that that game took you on, the way that you felt at the end of that game versus when you started. When you start, you're, you're getting effed up by bandits. When you finish that game, you are a god. Nothing can touch you, literally, unless you just sit there and let it hit you. That game's fantastic. And then Animal Crossing, I have dumped like 250 hours into that game. That game is fun. That game is ridiculous. It's I play it every day, and I want to play it every day. Even though I'm doing the same stuff you know, for the most part, from day to day, it's still fun enough that I come back to it every day happily. And I can, every time they add something new to the game, I get just as excited as I was the last time they added something. The turkey day, the the Christmas stuff that's coming up. It's going to be ridiculous. I'm going to dive in every single day with new excitement and new fresh eyes and fresh hopes. But I think Hades takes it out of this category for me just because of all the things that I've said every time I've talked about Hades in this podcast right now, it's the total package for me. Plus, as somebody who loves Greek mythology, I loved it growing up. It was like my jam as a kid. This is like the perfect vision of it. Everything you know about Greek mythology, everything you sort of remember from when you were a kid, they have little threads of the narrative that go into that. You know, these side characters that you remember, like, oh, yeah, he's the – who is this? Oh, yeah, that's that guy that he met that one time. And then they totally have a little thread association that goes from this character to that one. You get to see the aftermath of certain characters who, you know, through mythology, this thing happened to them. Now, Hades, the game, takes place after that's done, so you can – see where those two characters ended up. You can bring them back together or split them apart, you know, depending on which way the Hades narrative goes. Out of these games in this, the Game Awards Game of the Year category, Hades takes it. The three games that I've talked about are all fantastic games. Every single one of them deserves it. But for me is Hades here in this category, not my Game of the Year category that we're going to talk about here on Third Shift in a month or two. But Hades gets it out of here for me for everything I've talked about. The game is freaking amazing. I agree with you. Hades is amazing. And last was to, these games are all amazing, all right? There's a reason why they're on this list. There's a reason why they're here for the game of the year. We'll talk about our own at a later date and time. But of this list, it, it was really difficult for me. Uh, you know, I, I know I'm missing out on some Hades because I haven't played it enough. But I got to say, I don't play a lot of games more than once doesn't happen you're not you don't get eric batten to play a game more than once almost ever there's very few games i'll do that for you know a game i did that for this year ff7 remake now i can promise you if that game was not fantastic and i'd gotten to chapter 14 like i did and then my stuff was all erased i would not have played it again i would have said yeah i'll get back to that guess what witcher fantastic game I didn't get back to that. I didn't play it and finish that game, even though I spent probably 40 hours playing it. Never finished it. Because it wasn't good enough in my eyes to get me back. This was. FF7 brought me back. FF7 got me back. And I played that whole game, smiling from ear to ear. Well, I'll tell you what. When I got to the Don Cornario scenes and the, and the whole dance again, I was still 
grinning from ear to ear, cracking up, having a blast, doing that whole thing. All the big moments, all the hits, still had the feels, still made me sad, still made me happy, still made me mad where they were supposed to, even after I'd already seen them the first time, not to mention having played the game forever ago, so I already know all the beats anyway. Man, Jesse Biggs, these are my people, you know? Not Wedge, I disclude Wedge because I hate Wedge. He likes cats and he... Dummy. What a dummy. Ugh, God. But anyways, I gotta give it to him. Ghost, it was so tough, though, because Ghost is so damn good. And even this moment, speaking of Ghost, I'm like... Man, I want to go and play some Legends, man. We, we've we neglected Legends for like a couple weeks now. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to do that. So it's with a heavy heart that I put it to the side for FF7 Remake. But I got to give it to FF7 Remake overall as my game of the year off of this particular list. You can do it, boys. I have faith in you and everybody else. You're all great. I love you too. But this is, hey, we got to pick. And that's the end. That's all the categories for the Game Awards. So what do you guys think out there in podcast listener land? What are your picks for Game of the Year out of these categories? What are your picks out of all these categories? Because I know your Game of the Year is going to be something outside of all this stuff. Or maybe inside of all this stuff. But you know what? I won't know that until you let me know via the email, thirdshiftme at gmail.com. On the Twitter machine at thirdshiftme and find us on Facebook under Third Shift. You can do it. You can do it. You need to get over there and you need to do it. Or you can find us on that Facebook where you can follow us. You can throw little thumbs up and you can put little things there. And again, I promise you, I'm over there. I'm paying attention. I'll listen. And if you're not over there and you're not hanging out, you can check out Patreon and throw us a buck or two. It's like a little tip jar. You like what you hear, like what you see? Give us some cash. Give us some money. It helps us keep the lights on and pay those bills. Oh, my goodness, we need to pay those bills. And on top of it all, we got a little thing where if you give us a million bucks, we're going to open up a food line. We're going to have all sorts of fun. We got babies in jars, cold cocks, patented, soon to be patented, unpatented, patented, whatever it is. You guys know the rigmarole. It's going to be there somehow, some way, in some shape or form, hopefully, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be, I keep saying, it's going to be a weird, wacky world if it ever happens. You could be that one to make this world happen. Consider it. But if you can't, that's fine, too. You can throw us all sorts of support in the way of mailbag questions. Hey, tell us what your Game of the Awards, Game Awards, Games of the Year are, and all that good stuff. You can support us over on Twitch, follow, subscribe, all that over there. Gives us, gives us, use, gives us a language, speaky. I don't know. <laughs> You can also give us all that love and support over on Twitter, iTunes, five-star ratings. You guys know what I'm talking about. Get out there and do it. We need it, we love it, and we want it. Another thing that we need you to do is listen to the very next episode. It'll probably be an abbreviated episode because the next episode is supposed to drop on Thursday, the 26th. I won't even be here. Yeah, yeah so I, th- I think you and I will probably do some kind of pre-recorded, like, what games you're thankful for this year, little hub-drub, hub bub some something nice for the people, just a little, you know, a little short thing. So take a look out for that on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, or on YouTube. As I always say, if you like what we're doing, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. Indeed we do, and we appreciate them old five stars. I hope y'all come up with the time of Thanksgiving coming, the time of giving, the time of love and sharing and caring. You got to give us them five-star ratings, so get out there and do that. And then you can go to your family's house and eat a big old turkey leg and say, I gave, I shared, I cared. And you can feel better not choke on that turkey leg because you gave us five-star rating. And if you don't, you're going to choke on your turkey leg and you'll die at Thanksgiving. And with that, there's nothing else to say but... Shut up and sit